Good evening, and welcome to the Spiritualist Circle of Light. I'd like to open with prayer. May God, who in the mystery of his vision and power, transforms his white radiance into his many-colored creation, from whom all things come and into whom they all return. Grant us the grace of pure vision. Amen. This is our sharing portion of the service. This is for you, by you. This is your opportunity to share the events during the week, some of them may have been joyful, some of them may have been, well, not so joyful. But this is your opportunity. And I will take this opportunity to share an event that happened to me just a short time ago at the beginning of the week. I woke up one morning and, well, I shouldn't say I woke up one morning because it was still dark out. So it may have been morning, it was after midnight, it may not have been morning. You know, you make your own judgment, but it was about three o'clock. I woke up to the sound of silence. Now, typically I have a fan turning in the window. So, hence the term waking up to silence. There were no lights from the clock, no light from the air conditioner and standby, no night light. First thing that comes to mind when you wake up at that time of the night is that, you know, the power's out. Well, obviously. But I looked across the way and the shop across the street, their lights were still on. Well, you know, the one they leave on during the night. And the street lights were on. So I wandered into the other room. I sleep in the upstairs. And, you know, I see all these, these look like a tree. So, you know, I, I'm checking the neighbor's lights and that. And they see they're on. And I said, what's going on here? So I went downstairs. You know, I put on my robe, went downstairs. Looked out the windows, the neighbors had lights, but I didn't. So I went outside and lo and behold, in my backyard was a tree. Well, there's supposed to be a tree, but the tree is supposed to be upright, not lying down across the power line. So needless to say, I contacted the city. They responded very quickly. I had power back on in the morning uh, within a short amount of time. And I have spent the rest of the week cutting up the tree. So there is my sharing for the week. Uh, this is our healing and meditation portion of our service. Uh, if you would like a healing, this would be the time where you would make such a request. And during the meditation, I would direct my healing energies towards you, towards your, your aura or your biofield. So, but I will say a prayer of healing and then we will recite our healing affirmation. We call upon thee, Father, Mother, Gods. We call upon thy healing power. We request that it emanate from thee upon this world to shine upon those in need, to bring clarity to those in confusion, to heal those who are in need of healing, to bring security to those who are afraid, to 
bring that which will will disperse fear. We ask that it reaches out and touches everyone who calls upon it, who is in need of it, to the nursing homes, to the prisons, to the streets, to the homeless, to those in power. For healing comes in a variety of ways. For like the man weak and old who was sick and was told, take thy bed, rise and walk, you are whole. God will help us today in the same loving way. Faith in God brings us blessings untold. God is healing us now with his infinite power. We can feel Jesus' presence by us. What a wonderful peace that God's love brings to us. We are whole and free. Amen. As we go into our guided meditation, we request that you remember that sensation of love. Remember what it felt like when you experienced love. Not what you think love is, but what you experienced love to be. We want you to go into that and to rest in that. And if any come to mind that are in need healing, you know, focus your thoughts upon them. For where the mind goes, so does the life force that is within us. Rest within mind. Allow its thoughts and visions to enter. This is the nature of mind. Mind is not within us. Mind is all around, moving to and fro like tides of the ocean. experiences past and future as though they were one. Today, right now, this very moment, direct mind into yesterday. It is not the ordinary that attracts mind. The mundane exists at the place of meeting. It is the electrical, the exhilarating, the exposition that draws mind. It is the emotional buoys we cast Reminders of that we seek to forget. Today, 
we shall remember. These gifts of despair we need not keep. It is not the emotion we seek to resolve. We must look deeper. We must see why we took on the burden. Only then may we understand. Only then may we return the gift. Observe.
with understanding comes wisdom. With wisdom comes awareness. With awareness comes healing. It is time to let go. Time to let go and rest. Time to let go and heal. Time to let go. It is time to let go. This will be your opportunity to share your meditation experience if you choose. We know that they can be very personal. This would also be our the message portion of our service. We hope that you might contact us for a message of your own. As we continue with our service, we move into the discussion or the lesson part, however you choose to, to view it. And our inspiration comes from the Gnostic writing of the secret book of John. We come from the beginning. Now, you must keep in mind that this particular Gnostic book uh, according to some, its original writing was not Christian-based. That came afterwards, sometime before 185 A.D. So, but, you know, some of this may be difficult to understand. Uh, there's some different ideas that are being presented with this. So we begin our short study with this, spirit is a unity over which no one rules. It is the God of truth, the father of all, the Holy Spirit. And when we come to this, you know, we, we I may want to consider the idea that the term spirit, you know, from the Latin spiritus and other versions of this word in different cultures often means breath. 
or can even be interpreted as life. So, because breath is life, and life is a unity which no one rules, because we all participate in this. A breath is an activity, it's a verb, it's action. It requires activity, inhale and exhale. So it is a word of action. And if spirit is a word that means life, then life is action. But it may not be in the way that we suspect because we're not talking about the creative aspect of life. We are talking about the life experience because to experience, experience is an action. It is an act. It is a verb. It is to partake. It is to join. So, you know, we may not suspect life in this aspect to be spirit, but life is about experience. Life is what unifies us. We all participate in it. You cannot sit on the sidelines because the sidelines are part of life. So life unifies us all because we all participate in it. And no one rules over our lives, only us. I only rule over my life, just as each of you rule over your lives. No one rules our lives but us. No one rules my life but me, despite the circumstances that may appear to to have been not of my making. Often, if I look in the correct path, in the right direction, I can see how I arrived where I am at today through a series of choices, decisions, actions, all of this. Now, this may not be the consensus of many because, you know, Many people will say, well, I didn't ask for this to happen to me. No, you did not ask for that to happen. But you were there, you participated. It is still a part of you. For instance, I, I suspect I experienced a brainstem stroke. You know, I did not ask for that to happen. However, however, it occurred. It may not be within my understanding, but it occurred. I may have a, it may be a, a predisposition to the event. You know, a predisposition means there's the likelihood of it happening. It could be that. It could be that uh, I did not be, I did not become mindful of my health in time soon enough it could have been there there are a lot of reasons nonetheless it happened i am there i must participate i am still a participant i am still part of the whole and then there are times where we surrender control we surrender our power over ourselves and even when we do this we yet must accept responsibility for that choice because as we surrender our power to another and they make decisions for us we have accepted them uh, through proxy so life is 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 
an interesting experience because no other experience, no other action, no other reality, well, perhaps, but life brings us exactly what we ask for. It brings us exactly what is expected despite all of this being beyond our perception because there are no illusions about life there are only self-deceptions and self-delusions all based on our perception how we choose to see life how we choose to understand it all of this affects our experience of life after all we all experience the same thing we all experience loss we all experience anger we all experience joy even though we often remain at a loss as to why the experience occurred we all make the same attempts we all experience the same failures to a variety of degrees the same with success we all experience success with a variety of degrees you know all of us seek to belong to something to someone to an event we all seek to become part of something we all seek security we all seek something So there's little about life that happens to us that was not by choice. Unfortunately, we are not always aware of that choice, but that is part of our purpose for being here, to learn to become aware. Because when we become aware, that is when we are able to do something about it. And yet there are aspects of life we have no control over. We're not able to influence. For these instances, we must rely on the wisdom of life. Some may call that the divine. Some may call that the law of attraction. It's all a part of nature. We can see the wisdom of life when we observe the laws of nature but we're not going to go into these natural laws but this is something for us to consider and to keep in mind one must not consider spirit as god or a specific quality for it is more excellent than god's Think about this. When we call something, when we call an idea, an experience, when we call it God, we have set limitations. Because the expectations we have of God are the limitations. This is why spirit or life has no specific quality. Life cannot be described in the future. It cannot be described in the past. Experience, once something is experienced, it becomes a memory. But that memory does not necessarily move into the past. That memory still exists in the present when it comes through mind, just as that which has yet to be experienced, we call in the future. But there is no time frame in which it can be experienced because life is not linear. We think in linear aspects. Two follows one. 
four follows three and two and one. That's linear. Life does not happen that way. When we experience deja vu, we have either, either experienced something from the past, which is in the present or has yet to be experienced, or, or we have, have experienced something through mind, through dream, through the inner reality, through meditation. All of this is part of the life experience because the life experience unifies everything. So nonlinear theory suggests that experience borders on non-existence. And it borders on non-existence because in order to experience, there must be something beyond what's already occurred. And once it has occurred, it is not repeated. It is only repeated through mind, what we call memory. And mind, which is non-local, moves through past and future. And only when the mind is quiet does it come into the present and occupy the present. Because the present is where life is at. And life unifies all. Life unifies the future. Life unifies the past. Life unifies the present. All things are unified through the life experience. And once it has been experienced, it has been measured. It moves out of the nonlinear aspect into the linear aspect, but only here. Because this is what we use to go through and find specific memories. And when we sift through memories, we don't sift through them in chronological order. We sift through them in a variety of orders by similarity. So life is not of a specific quality. And because it is not of a specific quality, it cannot be God. It is more excellent than that because it is continual. Life is continual. Something to keep in mind. Breath, which is spirit, breath represents growth and decay. Permanence and impermanence. We inhale and we exhale. That is breath. Breath equals inhale and exhale. That is one breath. That is growth and decay. They're simultaneously. This is why life is more excellent than all because it draws everything together. It unifies everything. If there were a unifying theory that we could, could point to, it would be some representation of the life experience. I want to thank you for allowing me to share. I hope this was beneficial. My purpose is to provide you with an idea, a direction, something different, something to think about. That is my purpose. That is our purpose. If you find any of this beneficial, please, please leave seeds with us because when you leave seeds with us, we are able to leave seeds with others. It is part of the experience. It helps us grow. It helps you to grow. And for those of you who, who may wish to leave seeds with us, we will say this prayer. 
we thank thee, Father, Mother, God, for allowing us to earn, to generate, to, to have excess of what is needed. We thank thee for allowing us to share what we have taken in. And we know that it will be returned to us in a fashion that is most beneficial for us, a hundredfold, a thousandfold, in whatever fashion, however it is needed. And we thank thee in this. God bless. Now we would like to close this service with prayer. With collected minds, we are at the command of the divine, that we may obtain blessedness. Amen. The opening and closing prayers are from the Svetasvatara Upanishad. Thank you very much for allowing us to share.